reading here. I know we're still going to go back to verse 11. I'm not forgetting about it. <laughs> Loved, but Esau have I hated. So that is the quote where it says, as it is written from Malachi, that we just read in Malachi 1.3, where he said, uh, I'll read it for you again. Malachi 1, 2 says, Yet I love Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. In verse number 3, so where he's already talking about the heritage, he's talking about the people, he's talking about the land, he's talking about everything that is, that is Esau, not just the individual, which is, ties in perfectly with Genesis 25, with that prophecy and also is going to, of course, tie in perfectly with just who are the people of God as Romans 9 is talking about. It's the people of the promise. It's the people that were promised of the seed of Abraham and then the, the, the seed of Isaac and, of course, then carrying on to the seed of Jacob and that God had chosen that line in advance. And now let's go back to verse number 11 keeping this in mind, the whole context and all the references of these passages, verse number 11 says, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Then it says, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. So what the Calvinist tries to do is make the parenthetical statement just completely stand alone outside of the context of everything else that's being, you know, that, that's there. And trying to explain that, well, God just hated Esau and God just uh, loved Jacob just for his own reasons, just because he wanted to. And it says, see, it was before there was any good or evil done. So it had nothing to do with what they did at all. And God just hated one and loved the other one. And that's just the way it was. Well, no, we're talking about the people. We're talking about the nations. We're talking about the seed through which Christ was going to come, and he chose one over the other because he didn't have to choose when it, you know, when it came to, to Abraham. Well, he already chose it wasn't through Ishmael, right, because it was by the seed of promise, not by Abraham's own works with the concubine. He actually did it um, through promise, and then, of course, with Isaac, he had two, two sons, so he chose Jacob, and he chose Jacob in advance, and he chose Jacob before any good or evil was done. But here's the thing. God also knows the future as well. You know, it's, it's God understands what's going to happen before it happens, before it comes to pass. And he say, it says here that the, God, the, the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not the election of, well, Jacob is saved and Esau's not, but the, the purpose of God choosing where Christ was going to come from. That's what mattered. It wasn't about an individual salvation, but the Calvinists will try to point to this and try to get you focused on that being about an individual salvation. But in this whole context of Romans 9, in the context of Malachi 1, and in the context of Genesis 25, it's not talking about an individual at all. It's talking about a whole group of people. That's what it's referring to. It's referring to an entire nation being being chosen, an entire nation serving another nation. It's talking about um, then, of course, the choosing of the seed that is of promise. And that promise transferred from Abraham to Isaac and then from Isaac to Jacob. That's who the promises were made to, and the promise was ultimately about Christ who was to come.